good morning students we continue with our lectures on film movements we already started with montage and soviet cinemas hope it is clear i have sent you two videos one was my lecture and the other one uh, youtube video giving out the, an explanation of what is montage and soviet cinema so i hope it is clear so basically you have to know what is kuleshov effect kuleshov experiment and the two successors of kuleshov one is uh, gai eisenstein and vi kudovkin we have compared and contrasted the film making techniques employed by sir gai eisenstein and vi kudovkin and we have discussed another stream by ziga vato who believed that the ideal medium is documentary form and he is best known for his movie the man with a movie camera then we moved to the contributions it has made to world cinema it has contributed what is known as art of montage and we see the complete disruption of time space continuum which um, um, gets usage in french new wave also and in the works of alfred hitchcock and now we move to the next film movement that is german expressionism so expressionism is actually an art movement which originated in europe so german expressionism is a part of that modernist movement which initially started with poetry and painting in germany and it was the movement where people sought to express what they felt what they saw during the first world war and this german expressionism mainly spread around germany and northern european states and it tried to portray the world subjectively through the eyes of the artist and it distorted the reality so distorting it radically and evo evoking emotions rather than portraying the physical reality dadaism is yet another art movement which uh, which moved along these lines which moved against this conventional standard of beauty as you see in these pictures of this particular picture of mona lisa and there is this famous uh, painting the screen by edward munch so these are the uh um, paintings which reflected this movement and german expressionist films were influenced by these art movements so, so these are some of the german expressionist films so basically it is between 1919 and 1924 we'll give you the videos of these particular films um mainly nosferatu there is this cabinet of dr calgary etc and talking a little more detail about historical background the german cinema was flourishing in the pre war period with themes of modernity but after world war 1 the finances for this film started drying up and there was no scope for making all those mega scale narrative movies they couldn't afford to make all those mega scale narrative movies along with that they had this mood of defeat after the war there was this sense of decadence the sense of disappointment the sense of disillusionment creeped into this film industry as well and thus this german expressionism was a practical route a practical uh, way to make films and as well as it is it was a kind of a rebellion from their part too a protest from their part too and these are the film makers and films so the traces of german expressionism was seen in the first scene in this film the student of prague which came out in 1913 which was directed by stellan rai and the first prominent film is the cabinet of dr calgary which came out in 
which is directed by Robert Wayne. So I'll give you the YouTube clip of this movie and this uh, this uh, part from this movie itself explains the four features of German Expressionism. And these are the other films in Osferatu. It is a Symphony of Horrors by uh, W.F. Murnau and it is inspired by inspired from Dracula. And there is this Hands of Orlac by Robert Wayne and Metropolis by Fritz Lang. So this the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which was written by Hans Janowitz and Karl Mayer, was actually based on the writer's experiences as World War I soldiers and their distrust of authoritarian leadership. So these filmmakers deliberately distorted reality and tried to give their aim was to disorient the audience, to invoke a feeling of the time rather than a truthful or realistic depiction. So these films try to give the feel of that times, of that disappointing times. And Nosferatu, as it is said, it is, it is said that it is the grandfather of all vampire movies and it actually set the bar for every horror movie to come after. So this F.W. Uh, F. Murnau's film is a thinly veiled adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula and it holds up today as one of the most visually effective horror films and there is this Nos uh, Metropolis which is a silent film by Fritz Lang. It also uses expressionist imageries to give out a comment on technology consuming society. So this film is deep in exaggerated imagery, heightening which heightens the emotion and that actually drives the plot of this movie. And we come to the characteristics, mainly the themes of this movies, of these films. The film subject was all, all surreal, horror and about the unnatural acts of reality. So there is this depiction of madness savagery and sexuality and there was nothing romantic in it there is nothing like a romantic depiction of of the reality you see in these movies so it was something like a uh, projection of characters subjective and often mad mind onto the screen so you see all those distorted uh, distorted figures, you, uh, in, there is this uh, all elements of madness, savagery, sexuality coming into this movie which comes as the themes of these movies and when you see the sets, sets of the movies, it is heavily stylized, there is this candid camera shots, it is also known as tilted camera shots and you know it is it also has another name dutch angles dutch angles and there is this use of distorted bodies and shapes and set designs were always this had this gothic style with widely non-realistic and if you see that set it is geometrically absurd sets even the shadows were painted. So these are the characteristics. So mainly this expressionism used this on scene. As you see, all these heavily stylized camera 
candid camera shots and all those and geometrically absurd sets so they experimented more with german expressionist movies experimented more with mise-en scene and they always use this long shadow effects all these artificial sets with realistic details and these details in the sets bring forth the emotional that actually went to stir the audience mind and camera as it is said it is set in unexpected angles which try to give audience a different perception and it actually try uh, the main aim was to evoke mystery hallucinations and to give out extreme emotional stress so basically it was the projection of the external reality and you see these movies had slow pace when compared to other regular movies so these are the characteristics sets it was more or like abstract lacking depth it was more or like two dimensional so i will show you a youtube clip you will understand and acting it was very really stylized and it was consciously anti realistic and exaggerative in nature so at at some point they use extreme slow or or at at a point they used extremely fast movements so as i said earlier these expressionist movies films experimented with mise-en scene at technology level there was no experiments there was not much editing coming there and limited camera movement so if you compare it with the earlier film movement uh, the other one uh, soviet and montage cinema there you see the experiment at the technology level that experiment happened with editing that is montage but here in german expressionist movies they never experiment with editing they ex try to experiment with mise en scene so that is the basic difference between soviet uh, cinema montage cinema and german expressionist films but this particular movie metropolis was an exception to this you see some kind of an experiments happening in that level too in metropolis and the impacts it made in world cinema it was financially successful across the globe in the beginning but later we see that by 1923 there was a political barrier and forced ban and this woman was banned as a degenerated art form but this german expressionist films moved to hollywood where this expressionism continued with the influence of hollywood glamour and culture and it is considered that the main reason for the fade away of expressionism was the gradual disinterest in this topic people lost interest in this art movement along with that these directors like fritz lang led germany fearing nazi and impacts other impacts include the attention its attention given to mise-en scene got replicated in french poetic realism the movement which you will study next and the dark settings employed in german expressionist films was imitated by film noir a genre of film which came out in america and all those horror films drew inspiration from german expressionism so that's it girls about german expressionist movement
Now we move to the next movement, French poetic realism, which happened in between 1936 to 1939. So you know, this is the period of Second World War. So these are the means, John Renoir. The, these films, The Crime of Montserrat and The Life Belongs to Us, both by John Renoir. These are the important films. So the historical reasons behind the emergence of French poetic realism. So you should understand that before beginning with French poetic realism, you should understand that it is not strongly unified like Soviet montage or German Expressionism, but there were a group of individuals who created this lyrical style. So we have these leading filmmakers like Thierry Chenard, Jean Vigo, Julien Duvivier, Marcel Carney, and the most significant director is as you see in the first slide, it is Jean Renoir. So, the historical reason behind the emergence, it paralleled with the rise and fall of popular front leftist government in France. And we see that when there was this rise of popular front leftist government, there was this this air of optimism in everyone which got which got reflected in the movies too during this period and it gradually moved to pessimism which was also visible in the films and along with that there was this industrial reason there was this decline of the most important studios there were this giant studios, Pathé and Gaumont, and it actually gave freedom to small-time directors to move away from the stereotypes. They gave expression to, or they gave new expressions to the reality. And it was basically inspired from German Expressionist film movements. So talking about the pessimist phase which happened in 1939 during this World War period we have these films like The Rules of the Game by John Reno and tried to give out the moral hypocrisies of upper class Parisians. So the characteristics, as I said earlier, it was influenced by, inspired from all those German Expressionist films. So as you see in German Expressionist movies, here too the attention is on Misson scene. The attention is given to all those minute details of lightings and sets. And you must understand that poetic realism or poetic realist films are recreated realism, not a kind of a documentary social realism. Not like as you see the realism in French New Wave, you will uh, learn it later. French New Wave or Italian Neo Realism. It is not like the realism used in those kind of movements. Here it is recreated realism. So they used stylized studio sets. So it is stylized and studio bound rather than approaching the social realism of the documentary. So they have this 
fatalistic view of life, a pessimistic view of life, with their characters mostly living on the margins of the society, either as unemployed members of the working class or as criminals. And after a life of disappointment, the characters get a last chance at love, but ultimately they are disappointed again. And all these films frequently ended with disillusionment or death. And the overall tone often resembled that of nostalgia and bitterness. And these degeneration of moods of hero are usually captured through these misconceived, and the narratives will be always rich with poetic symbolism, which brought out the tragedy, decadence. And all those motives will be employed to bring out the tragedy. So these films expressed similarities. All these films which came out during this period, films of Ranoa, Duvivier, Marcel Carney, etc. They had some kind of similarities because of small teams who worked across different films that you see in new generation Malayalam cinema too. When we discussed new generation Malayalam cinema, we have discussed this trend of different people coming together and taking up different roles for different movies. So here we see a small team taking up different roles in different films. So the set designers, lighting experts, script writers used to collaborate together on several films together. And mostly these films are leftist in political nature, but there are exceptions also. So leftist, you see John Renoir, the films like The Crime of Montsalam, and rules of the game and here there is this non-leftist Marcel Kani who had made these films like Port of Shadows and Julian Duvivier. So here ends French poetic realism. So both these German expressionist film and French poetic realism experimented with what is known as mise-en-scene. Unlike Soviet and montage cinema, which experimented with editing, that is montage. So here we stop this lecture. Now, in the next class, we will move to classical Hollywood film. So I will be giving you YouTube clips, explaining, giving out more explanations regarding these film moments. I have discussed only the major points. I will give you the YouTube clips of these movies, particular movies, and uh, give out, we will also give uh, an explanation from uh, other videos too. So please watch these things. Please, if you have any doubt, please clear it now itself. Because as I said earlier, this is completely an unfamiliar area for you. So if you have any doubts, please message me. And if you, if you want me to slow down, please ask me. So thank you girls, have a nice day.